So my 2020 grid prediction video banged, did very, very well. So YouTube's obviously, you know, rewarding me for this kind of content. So I'm gonna bring you another prediction video. Today we are gonna talk 2021 driver predictions. Obviously it goes without saying, big shake up in 2021. So the driver market is gonna be pretty open. A lot of drivers contracts are expiring at the end of next season. Of course, first and foremost, we've got to mention the drivers who will, not definitely, nothing's guaranteed. A contract doesn't necessarily, I mean, you would look at football, the amount of players out of contract who end up doing weird things. There are a few contracts that are in place to keep certain drivers at certain teams beyond 2021. Charles Leclerc is guaranteed at Ferrari till 24, Verstappen at Red Bull to 23, Perez at Racing Point, almost at Force India. 2022, Esteban Ocon, Renault, 2021, and George Russell, Williams, 2021. So that basically means that these drivers will be omitted from my prediction list because it's pretty much guaranteed uh, that they will be in their current teams, in their established teams, maybe except for one, um, but you'll see. So we'll start at the back. We'll start with Williams. Nicholas Latifi is my first driver who I'm pretty certain will be there in 2021. If you haven't watched my video on why Nicholas Latifi is so goddamn rich, link below and above. Give it a watch after this video. He's minted. His dad's bringing in a lot of money to that team. He's not going anywhere. And at the end of the day, he's young. He's 24. Uh, second in F2. Is not exactly a bad driver. There's a lot worse out there. There's a lot worse paid drivers out there. Nicholas Latifi, I think he'll be at Williams in 2021. I see no reason why not. And then alongside Nicholas, I do not think it's going to be George Russell. No, I do not. Even though he's in contract, like I mentioned at the start of the video, you can probably guess where I'm saying he's going to go. Uh, but no, no Georgie boy. George will be gone. And I think in his place will be... Either Jamie Chadwick or Dan Ticton, but most likely I would say Dan Ticton. Both currently have roles in Williams already, so they're in a good place to move up into the senior team. Uh, Dan Ticton's still very young, he's only 20. He's had a bit of a wobble in his career, even for a driver that young, like, just call it a wobble is a bit harsh, but he's got a chance. He's in F2 this year with Dams. I think if he has a good season, even you know, top five. I think top five this season for Tickton. And I think he's moving up to Williams, if you ask me. Jamie Chadwick, obviously, you know, smashed it in W Series. Obviously a very, you know, able driver. I think for her to make the move to Williams, I think it'd be hers if Tickton wasn't on the radar. I really do. But uh, with Dan waiting in the wings, part of Williams now, um, ex-Red Bull, you know, if he proves himself in F2 this year, which I... Think he, I think he'll get into that kind of top half. I think he'll do well. Um, then I think he's bound for the Williams car. So my Williams team for 2021 is Nicholas Latifi and Dan Tipton. On to the Americans, on to Haas. So Gunter Steiner will finally, finally get rid of Roman Grosjean. Please. I, I just can't, I don't get it. I've mentioned this plenty of times before and I will continue to whilst he's got a seat in F1. Roman Grosjean, I'm sorry, mate, you're out. So K-Mag will retain that seat, I believe. I believe he'll stay at Haas. But alongside him, and this is, this is a left field shout, uh, bringing together two very polarizing characters because they don't get along. I'm, yes, yes, I'm saying Nico Hulkenberg. I think he will make a return to F1 and I think that will be with Haas. I still don't know what he's gonna do this year. Um, obviously being out of a seat, I don't know if he's just taking a year off, I don't know. I mean, if he takes a year off, I think that does limit his chances a lot. I think he needs to be racing kind of consistent, consistently over this year. But yeah, I think Nico might make, Probably, maybe just for one season, um, but I'm going to say Nico Hulkenberg takes that second seat at Haas. On to Racing Point. I'll get through these pretty quick. Perez is already under contract. I see no reason why he's going anywhere. And Stroll, his daddy runs the, runs the team. He's got loads of money. They ain't changing. Racing Point will remain as is with Perez and Stroll. Now, on to the rebranded Toro Rosso Alpha Tauri team. 
interesting name, looking forward to seeing their car. But in terms of the drivers who will be driving said car, I'm going for Pierre Gasly in one seat. He'll, I'm, no doubt he'll retain his seat. You know, if he has a really good season, Red Bull might give him another chance. I don't see it. Um, even if he has a good season, I can't see him going to Red Bull. Maybe another team will snap him up, but I think uh, he'll be a safe bet for Alpha Tari next season. And alongside him, I am not going with Daniel Kvyat. I'm afraid I think Danny, Danny Kvyat, I, th I don't think he's going to make it. I don't think he's going to make it to 2021. I don't think he'll make it because I think there are good young drivers waiting in the wings. And I think Yuri Vips will be the man to take the seat. He was in F3 last year. He did a bit of Super Formula in Japan, I think. He is a very talented driver and I think Red Bull will give him a shot at that Alpha Tauri car and I think he will sit alongside Pierre Gasly. Yuri Vips, Pierre Gasly. Now, on to Sauber. And the reason I'm calling him Sauber and not Alfa Romeo, another little prediction here, I don't believe the Alfa badge will retain beyond you know, next year. I think it's I think it's guaranteed pretty much for this season because they've already updated their website with Alfa Re Romeo Racing and PK Orlan because they've got Kubica in as a test driver and all the money that he brings, which we talked about in the Latifi video. Uh, nevertheless, I think that... I don't know. I just can't see Alfa keeping their name in it. I, I, they don't... In terms of an automotive organisation, yes, they've got history in F1, but I don't think they're doing particularly well. And... There's been murmurs of them pulling out and I'm just going out the whim and saying I reckon it will happen. Whether another brand will attach their name to Sauber to have that foothold in F1, maybe. But I'm just going to call him Sauber for the time being. So, Giovinazzi, I think he'll still be there. I still think he'll retain his seat at Sauber. I reckon he'll still be there in 2021. And then alongside him, this was a really difficult one. This was a really tricky one um, because there's two good drivers Schumacher and Schwartzman, who I think are the two most likely for that seat. Now, Schumacher's been in F2 this year. He's not set the series on fire. Like he's, he's, he's not done amazingly well. Yes, he got a win, but he's not really done bits. Um, Schwartzman won F3, so he's clearly proven himself to be a very able and talented driver. Um, obviously, they're both Ferrari uh, Driver Academy guys. Uh, they'll be against each other in F2 next year, I believe. I'm pretty sure uh, Schwarzman is going to be in F2. And obviously, Schumacher will be as well. So I think whoever performs the best out of them two next year in F2 is going to get that seat. So, ultimately, I'm going to go with Schumacher because I think he will... He's got a little bit more experience uh, than Schwarzman and he does tend to, you know improve as he goes in the series. He doesn't tend to hit hit the ground running in the series, but obviously the Schumacher name, obviously that's going to count for a lot. And I do think that will be the, you know, the, the, the resounding, the final factor, which will secure him that for, um, that Sauber, sorry, not Ferrari, Sauber seat in 2021. Giovinazzi and Schumacher. Now we go to Renault. So Ocon, has a contract there, and I do believe he will stay at Renault. He will still be there. French driver, French team. You know, fair play. I think that's a pretty sound bet. Alongside him, I do not think will be Daniel Ricciardo. Partly because I don't trust Renault. I don't believe that they've got it in them to deliver uh, on what they promised to Danny Rick. And I think they will underperform again this year. And I think that ultimately he will want to look elsewhere. And I think he'll have options elsewhere. I'm going with Valtteri Bottas. Yes, you might have noticed him in the thumbnail. I'm, I'm saying Bottas. I'm saying Bottas will lose his seat at Mercedes. And he will go to Renault. Look, Bottas is clearly a very talented driver. He's a very, very quick driver over one lap. Arguably quicker than Lewis at the minute. But his race craft just ain't there. And I don't think Mercedes will give him any more time because I don't think, again, I think Lewis will do well this year. I don't think he'll win. Check out my predictions uh, video, by the way, in the description and above to see who I think will win. But ultimately, Bottas just doesn't have it for me just to, to right at that top level where you've got Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. I just don't, Bottas, Bottas ain't part of that group, I'm afraid. And I think Mercedes will be like, no, ciao, adios. 
um, you can go to Renault. And to be fair, they did that with Ocon to Renault. He was a Mercedes boy, went to Renault, so they've got a bit of a relationship there. So I think this is quite a feasible shout. So Renault, Esteban Ocon, and Valtteri Bottas. On to McLaren. Okay, so my boys, my favourite team, McLaren. Love them. Lando Norris will still be at McLaren in 2021, I believe. I'm. He's, he's so embedded into the team. Um, I hope he is, because I love McLaren. Uh, I love Lando, and I think they would be very foolish to let him go. Um, and I love Carlos Sainz, but I don't think he'll be alongside Lando Norris in 2021. I think the bromance will be broken up. In, in terms of who will replace him, I think a man who will give equal bromance to, uh, to Lando. And I'm looking forward to seeing these two on the Unbox McLaren YouTube channel. Daniel Ricciardo, I think he'll go to McLaren. I think McLaren will outperform Renault again this year. I don't think Ricardo is going to go to Ferrari. Um, I can't see it. Mercedes, I can't. It, Red, he's not going to go back to Red Bull. Of course he's not. But I think McLaren have a much clearer long-term vision and are much more likely to actually deliver on that long-term vision uh, than Renault are. And I think Daniel will make the move to McLaren. I know, maybe I'm biased because I'm a fan, but I really feel like they've got something there at McLaren. Like, They've got a real good chance of making that top three or top four. And I think with Danny Rick and Lando Norris, you know, they, they get along very well, clearly. You've got a very, very, very talented up-and-coming driver. You've got, for me, the fourth best driver on the grid in Daniel Ricciardo. I think that'll put him, put him in an amazing position to do well going forward. So McLaren, Lando Norris, and Daniel Ricciardo. So, on to the top three. I'm going to start with Red Bull because... Again, nice quick. I don't think they're going to change. I think it will be Max and I think it will be Alex. Max obviously has his contract, which is sorted him to 2023. Plus is, you know, arguably the best driver on the grid. Red Bull ain't going to let him go anywhere anytime soon. And Alex Albon, I do think he's going to prove himself. He's done enough to showcase to me that he's got the bollocks to actually go for it and, and try and go for moves that a lot of drivers wouldn't. Um, and I think Red Bull respects and appreciate that and they don't mind, you know... They didn't want Daniel Ricciardo to leave, and he had, a fair, he had his fair share of run-ins with Max Verstappen. I think that Alex Albon will retain his seat, who will be a great second driver. I think they obviously they're going to put all their resources behind Max, but I think Alex really fills that role very well, and he will get his podium, and I'm confident he'll get a win next year. Fingers crossed. Come on, Alex. As for Ferrari, obviously Charles Leclerc 2024, can't see that changing. In terms of the man who will sit alongside him, I'm on record saying I don't think Seb will make 2021. I've got no reason to change my opinion right now unless he has an unreal season this year, which I can't see happening. Alongside him, I think Ferrari will and should have Carlos Sainz. I think they should throw every euro they can at him to get him in the team. Carlos Sainz has been chronically underrated up to this season. I think he's proven this season how good he is. And I think Ferrari would be foolish to let, who is still a very young driver, uh, go somewhere else or stay at McLaren. I think throw throw everything you can at Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, driver partnership, I think would be sick. Carlos has got his links to Fernando, who has his links to Ferrari. I know you can make these links up anywhere, but, that, but they are close and... You know, Carlos does have a, a relationship there with Ferrari, even though he came through Red Bull. You know, there's no way he's going to Red Bull. I can't see it, Mercedes. I feel that Ferrari should get Carlos Sainz because I feel that he would be a cracking, cracking second driver. I feel he'd work really well with Charles. <clears throat> there would still be that kind of first and second driver, you know, differentiation there, I feel. But I think he's got experience. I think he's the man to take Ferrari forward. Not Seb, I'm afraid. So, Ferrari, Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz. And last, but by no means least, I do not believe that Hamilton will go to Ferrari. As much as that would be sick, I do not think it will happen. I don't. I just can't see it. I think that Lewis's best chance of winning in this new era is with Mercedes. I think he'll want to prove a point. I think he will really want to do that. And I think stand at Mercedes is the right decision for him. And then alongside him, this shouldn't come as a surprise because I prefaced this very much earlier, 
it will be George Russell. I think Valerie Bottas will be coming out. I think George Russell will get promoted, essentially, from the feeder team that is Williams to Mercedes. I think he's, he's, he's done a lot to prove himself this year, even though he's been 19th in a struggle in Williams. The distance between him and Kibitza has been ridiculous. I think he'll do well this year. I still think that Williams will struggle, but I still think he'll do enough to prove himself. You know, he test drives the Mercedes already. He's already got that relationship there. I just feel that two seasons of experience under his belt, stick him in with Lewis. I think he'll be a great talent going forward because, look, ultimately, I, I, I appreciate that Valtteri Bottas is a fantastic second driver to have. He's a very much a team player. He will kind of let Lewis get his way. But Mercedes have got to think long term. Lewis hasn't got... Years and years and years and years left left ahead of him. You know what I mean? Like he's he's kind of coming up mid thirties now. They've got to start thinking to the future. And I think George Russell could really be the man to keep that team at the very top. So I think they would be. He's inevitably going to get into the Mercedes, even if it isn't in twenty twenty one. But I do think, I think they'll go for it. I think it makes sense. I think they'll go for it. So Mercedes will be Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. So there we have it. Another 20 minute plus video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my 2021 driver's predictions. Uh, again, like last time, if you can be bothered, if you've got the time, let me know in the comments below your 20 drivers in what teams they'll be in, who gets dropped, who do you agree with? Who do you disagree with? We know now that the new McLaren will be launched uh, in under a month's time, as will the new Renault. Very much looking forward to seeing that. I'll be sure to bring you guys a video as soon as they drop, as soon as I can afterwards, um, even though I've got a stag do around that kind of time. So it might be difficult for me to get a video out, but we'll see. I've been Tomo. This is the Tomo F1 YouTube channel. Thank you so much again for watching. All the support, massively appreciated. Have a good one, Tala. I tell you what, man, this last couple of weeks on this channel has been insane. Thank you so much for the support. Everyone who's watching now, everyone who's new to the channel, welcome, thank you. Like, all of a sudden, like 400 subscribers out of literally nowhere. To be honest, I I've kind of given up on this channel. I kind of, I put a few videos out there, I was getting absolutely f all in terms of engagement, and I was like, I didn't have the motivation. And then all of a sudden, my Rich Energy video bangs, my predictions video bangs, and we're here. So I'm filming this at the start. I'm not gonna put this in at the start because it's a bit waffly. I'll put this in at the end. But thank you so much. Really, like, it's, it's insane. There's been so many lovely, really nice comments. It means a lot. And um, it shows me that I'm doing something right. Like, I'm, like I, I feel so, like, infused. I feel so like ready to like put shit out now. Like I've got like this written up. I've got a script for another video written up. I just want to like start banging out content as often as I can um, for you guys and girls. So thank you again so much. Like just keep keep watching, keep commenting, keep subscribing, and I will keep making. Thank you.